what you're describing mm-hmm. is kind of like an internal debate. So it's almost like Lam Rim or analytic meditation is internal debate. But one other yeah. aspect of uh, Tibetan Buddhism, which I've watched some of your videos on, mm-hmm. is actually like external debate mm-hmm. uh, as, as it happens in, in Tibet. And that's something which I've never seen at, at least formally, in a, mm-hmm. a Theravada monastery. And uh, I really loved your videos on, uh, on the aspect of debate. And I'm wondering if you could maybe give mm-hmm. a, a, a short synopsis or, or brief introduction to okay. what debate practice is like. Yeah, well, we don't really do the debate practice the way the Tibetans do. Okay, first of all, because, um, yeah, Westerners like to discuss more than debate, I think. Yeah, so we do question and answer to help each other learn and to help each other think more deeply about things. But we don't do, because the, the Tibetan debate style is, it ha, it's very laid out. There's, it's very systematic and you got to do it a certain way. So we don't do it exactly like that. Okay. But I think um, discussion of the Dharma and asking each other questions is very, very helpful. Yeah. And um, the debate, what it does is it helps you clarify what you really believe in. Because it's easy to say, oh, yes, I believe phenomena are selfless. And then somebody starts asking you questions. Yeah, like when you're teaching. You had that experience? Somebody who asks you a question, you're sitting in front of the room, supposed to be the big know-it-all, and somebody asks a question and you're going, I don't know the answer to that one. (laughs) You know, gee, uh, yeah. And then you have to say, I don't know. And I'll go ask my teacher or I'll look it up and I'll get back to you. Okay. So the thing about debate and discussion is it, you know, it's asking, you have to ask yourself these questions. Uh, What do I really understand and what do I really believe? Yeah. Do I really believe that there's no substantial self? Do I really believe that? Yeah. All you have to do is criticize me. And boy, I believe in a substantial self because you're insulting my substantial self. And I've got to let you know not to do that. Okay. So, you know, it, 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 yeah, it makes us get clear. And I think especially people who grew up in a Judeo Christian environment. Yeah, where, and especially if you went to Sunday school, you know, all this Sunday school, you're a little kid, all this Sunday school, sin, heaven, hell, reward, punishment. Yeah, you, that gets put in your mind when you're like this big. Yeah, and God will save you, or Jesus, or, uh, you know, Muhammad, or, you know, Moses, or, you know, whoever it is, you know, you need to look outside, and somebody will save you, you just have to, and this is in your mind, you know, they put this junk in your mind, (laughs) yeah, I can say it's, it's junk, I'm with fellows who I hope believe the same thing, although I'm not sure. Um, Yeah, but I'm joking. Um, But um, it makes you question, you know, because people, for example, I've heard people say, you know, when, when somebody dies, when you have somebody that you love who dies, Buddhism is not very comforting. Yeah, Christianity is much more comforting. They go to heaven. Yeah, so all I have to do is say, God took them and they're in heaven. And then I feel okay. Buddhism tells me they're going to be reborn. And Buddhism tells me, you know, there's many rebirths. 
And here's this ugly tarantula that maybe is the incarnation of my cousin who I love so much. Am I gonna drive, ride over and kill that tarantula? Okay. <laughs> you know, so it really makes you think, think you know, do, and, and then also because so many people uh, coming, especially depends on which brand of Christianity you got in or Judaism you got indoctrinated with, but guilt, you know, boy, guilt. I, I led a retreat once and we had a competition. Who has more guilt, the Catholics or the Jews? Yeah, the Protestants don't come anywhere near. Okay, but the Catholics and the Jews, boy, we were brought up with guilt. And you believe this, and it, it's a huge interference in your practice. So what debate and questioning and analytical meditation do is they make you look very deeply at that stuff. And do I believe it in here somewhere? And if I believe that I that karma means reward and punishment, do I believe that I'm going to be punished if I break this precept? And I'm going to re be rewarded if I keep another precept? Is that actually what the Buddha taught? And then, you know, okay, what do I really believe? And what makes sense, you know? So we use logic and reason to really discuss inside of ourselves with analytic meditation and in, you know, in discussion and debate with our Dharma friends of what, what do I really believe? And what can I, certify using logic, uh, you know, using logic and reasoning. Because just saying, oh, I believe it because it feels right is not good enough in Buddhism. It's not good enough. Yeah? Venerable, one of the things um, I feel like it's really interesting to hear debate held up as a means towards clarifying your core beliefs, because I feel like in today's kind of political social environment, it's very much not. It's deciding which side of two polars you fall on. And there's, it's, it's, it's a different dynamic. And it's one that I'm think is probably a bit more extreme than it's ever been um you know to say nothing of the jets and the sharks uh you know and <laughs> yeah <laughs> i so i'm i'm wondering as monastics and practitioners how do we use how do we walk clearly in our holy lives to avoid that entanglement and remain true to that core vision, purpose, and belief that you're pointing to that I assume cleaves right through much of this tangle in line with the way the Dharma has for millennia. Yeah. How do we, what's the role of monastics and monasticism and the core of the Buddhist path in today, which is, you know, so rife with change and um, polemic? Okay. Another, you ask very good questions, and uh, I need a little bit more than 20, 30 words. We, but, <laughs> please take as long know. as you need. <laughs> okay. But first of all, in, in, in our own hearts, we have to watch how our mind is reacting to these things. Yeah. Like, um, are we getting angry? Yeah. When you see the white supremacist, for example, yeah, or when you see Carl Rittenhouse getting off without even a slap on his hand, you know, 
or when you see, you know, any of these things, um, when you when you see what's going on with with you know, what is it? Bo Bobert is slant, you know, and her is Islamophobia, and you watch how your mind is reacting, and I'm getting mad. Though, how can those people think like that? Actually, they don't think like that. They're just trying to score political points. They're all a bunch of phony balonies. Okay. And you watch and, oh, that's anger. That's anger. Okay. You, you, I mean, you, at first, sometimes it's hard because you feel so self-righteous. I'm a Buddhist. I don't. I'm going to stick up for all the underdogs. I don't have Islamophobia. I don't, I'm not a white supremacist. You know, I'm a Buddhist and I have equanimity for everybody. Except this, 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 you know. And so you have to find the anger, for example, in yourself. And then work on it you know, through these methods of cultivating love and through these methods of, uh, of practicing fortitude or patience, you know, subduing our own anger. Uh, so learning, for example, okay, Donald Trump was my Dharma practice and still is my Dharma practice, okay? He's really, I have to say, thank you, Donnie, um, or giving me the opportunity to practice. To train the mind to see who Donald Trump really is. Who is he? You know, just on a conventional way. You know, I'm not talking about no selfless and no self. I'm just talking conventionally. Who is this man? You know, well, first of all, He's somebody who feels very insecure. Yeah, because people who act like that aren't people who have self-confidence. Yeah, when you really have belief in yourself, you don't need you're not attached to winning an election. Even you're, you're not going to turn the, up, the country and the world upside down by lying. You're not going to get involved in all these insulting things that go on. You know, only somebody who is very deeply insecure does that in order to make themselves feel important in some way or another. Yeah? Because people who are really secure, you know, my teachers don't act like that. My teachers are the ones who are, who are really self-confident, who have real security in their lives because it isn't external security. It's internal security. Yeah. My teachers don't need to hold a rally with everybody saying their name, shouting their name and clapping. And they don't need to go to court to try and get everybody to think that they won an election. They didn't. No. There are people who are confident. They don't need that external enforcement. But Donnie, I mean, he has very serious internal emotional problems. And at the time he's going to have, this man is going to have a horrible death. Yeah. When it comes for him dying, the, the craving, the clinging at arising at the time of death, when he's losing all of this stuff that he's spent his whole lifetime trying to build up, the, the pain is going to be amazing. And when I think of the karma he's created, 
I don't, I don't want to ever have that kind of karma. I mean, he's going to have a horrible rebirth, many horrible rebirths, probably. How can I be angry at somebody like this? I can't be angry. This, this is a person for whom I must have compassion. Yeah, and compassion isn't, oh, I feel sorry for Donnie, poor little Donnie, you know. No, it has got to be the compassion of, you know, I wish I could help him, this lifetime difficult. Although I really do make prayers to be able to, to talk, to, to give one Dharma talk to the US Congress, you know? <laughs> yeah, or, or to the, I have to, I should accuse, include the executive branch and the judicial branch as well. But, you know, it, it's like, I, I've got to have compassion for him when I have the big picture, when I really understand what samsara is about. Yeah. And, and so then you, you, you have to build up some internal fortitude to be able to handle this. And the, the injustice in the world, you know, our American injustice system. Yeah. And, and just think, I mean, same with Kyle Rittenhouse. My goodness, this kid, forget about, you know, the karma of murdering two people and injuring a third one. This life, he's going to have a horrible lifetime, this life. Already, what is happening to this poor kid? He is getting used by the right wing. They're using him, you know, putting him up as a poster boy for guns, as a poster boy for being vigilante, you know. He, they're using him, and at some point, he's going to become, when he's no longer useful to them, they're going to dump him. And what's he going to be left with? He was very important at the beginning, and then, and then he's going to have to contend in his life with his own conscience. Because what is legally, what people uh, judge legally is very different than what is virtuous morally. But it seems like one of the things you're pointing to is the need to, you know, the, the big picture, which is a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> and tracing things back to that, you know, shared humanity and, and first noble truth and one one of the things that has helped me keep that big picture when it's begun to slip has been um, those encounters with a few of those beings who I, I felt have really transcended um, any selfishness in their hearts. I mean, I was so hungry to meet people like that. And then, you know, as I entered on this path, more and more you start to, and it, it really does change your conception of what's possible. And mm -hmm. So we don't want to take much of your time, but I would be curious if, if you wouldn't mind, um, as just a final question, if we could ask, um, you know, you've spent time with some of the most, um, you know, some of the saints of our age. And I'm curious if you have one, you know, either like what the most, in, most, the largest act of loving kindness you've ever seen from one of these teachers, or perhaps one teaching or relationship um, with one of these teachers that you've been close to that's really resonated and guided you over these decades of mm -hmm. life? There's many of, of these things. Yeah, many of them. And uh, mo many of them, have involved how I've seen my teachers interact with other people. In other words, it's not necessarily the loving kindness towards me because uh, 
I, I know that there's some ego grasping on my part when I have that, when that's shown towards me. But when I can really see them show that towards others, um, it's really quite extraordinary. So I'm not sure which one to talk about. Um, okay, so one of, one of them, like with His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, um, there, in, in the, he was doing these series of conferences and there was, he got to know one scientist in these series of Buddhist science conferences. And this one scientist, uh, in my eyes, yeah, had a little bit of an ego problem, okay? Which tells you more about me than it tells you about him, okay? But his, at one, so he, at one conference, His Holiness walks in the room and this guy goes up to him and says, hello, Dolly, and gives His Holiness a, a hug. And I'm going, oh my God, you know, you, that's not the way you interact with the Dalai Lama, you know, oh, and his holiness didn't blink an eye. Didn't blink for one thing. Hello, my old friend. I'm so glad to see you, his holiness said. Yeah. So, so you know, compared with me going, how dare you, you <laughs> know, or just embarrassment, like, doesn't he know? Or His Holiness times, especially when he's talking to the Tibetans about the situation in Tibet. And many times I've seen him do this. And he says, do not be angry at the Chinese. What? You know, you're a refugee. You haven't been allowed to go back to your own country. And you won't be allowed to go back for the rest of your life, probably. There's been genocide there. There's been environmental destruction. There's persecution. You know, they've destroyed Buddhist monasteries and holy texts and images. And you're saying, don't be mad to the Tibetans, don't be mad at the Chinese. And it, and he really means it. He really means it. And one time I, I saw him, this was on TV, and some reporter in the US, might have been from the LA Times, said, said to His Holiness, kind of, Tell us about the situation. Why aren't you mad at the Tibetans? Or, I'm not, sorry. The, 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 the reporter says, there's been devastation and environmental destruction and all this stuff in Tibet. Why aren't you mad at the Chinese? And that's a doorway for his hopelessness. He could have really gone off and really say, Look what they've done and the genocide and the environment and look what the, how they're destroying the, the monasteries and they're persecuting the people and this and this and this. His holiness could have gone off on a really big thing. And this was, you know, on national TV. But when, this per, when the reporter asked, how come you're not angry? His holiness said, well, if I were angry, I couldn't sleep well. And I wouldn't eat food very well. I wouldn't have an appetite. And I would be really unhappy and grouchy all the time. And my anger, actually, it wouldn't do any good. It wouldn't change the situation at all. And the reporter is going, 
you know, because this was the lead in for him to go off on, you know, being a victim, on Tibet being a victim. And His Holiness didn't do it. And he just talked about the disadvantages of anger. And then he, uh, you know, talked about what Shanti Deva said. If you can do something about the situation, do it. If you can't, no use getting angry. So he said, I do my little bit. I do what I can in the world to, to ease the situation. But uh, I'm not going to get angry and waste my life on anger. Yeah. Venerable, I, I feel like you've been an example of <laughs> a life not wasted. And oh. you've been a doorway, you know, into the whole monastic form for me. And um, I'm just uh, having grown up, you know, near Servasti and seeing the ripples it's had. I really uh, am so grateful of the community you've set up there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and, and just thank you for taking so long with us as well. <laughs> yeah, we, we better kind of end, huh? Is, is there, a, I, we're happy to keep you for longer. We just don't okay. want to exhaust you. But if you have anything else you'd, you would be willing to share, then. Oh, maybe. I can talk forever, you know? <laughs> well, maybe not. But, um, okay, so this is a starter. And hopefully we will encounter each other many, many times on the Dharma path. And we can talk some more after that. We'd love okay. that. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Venerable. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah take care. <laughs> Let's see.